Uh, my name's John Rogers. Um, I am the founder and I run Disability Driving Instructors, um, which is uh, an information and advice service for disabled and um, deaf and hard, and hard of hearing people who want to learn to drive. Um, if you want to talk, to anything, uh, talk about anything else to us, we've got to stand just outside. Okay, what we're doing today is um, introducing the deaf customer support pack um, that DVSA have introduced just recently. Um, Amanda is going to be talking about that. Um, unfortunately, Gordon can't be with us today, um, but Amanda has stepped into, into the breach. Um, once, we, once Amanda's discussed the deaf customer support pack, um, then I'm going to be coming in and talking about the, um, the ADI handbook, um, teaching deaf people to drive that is in the final stages of being produced. Okay, and we're going to be explaining some of the hand gestures that can be used um, during tuition and on test um, when, you, when you're helping um, teach a deaf person to drive and when that deaf person is taking their test. Okay, um, it is vitally important what we're doing here. We want to create a level playing field for all candidates throughout the UK who are taking their test, whether they're physically disabled, whether they're um, deaf or hard of hearing, whether they've got learning difficulties. That's what we want to do. The Deaf Cast Customer Support Pack goes a long way to um, help make that level playing field and hopefully we will get what is intended to be a seamless transition from tuition to taking your test um, with the aid of that pack. Okay, so I'm now going to hand over to Amanda. There you go. Thank you. It's quite a heavy mic. Um, I'm Amanda Lane. I work for the DVSA. I'm the policy manager for technical standards, so I work within Gordon's team. Um, as John said, he's unable to be here this weekend, so I've stood in. Um, hopefully I can answer all your questions, but if there's anything I can't, I'll take that away and come back to you afterwards. Okay, so the background. Um, so as DVSA, we want to ensure that um, you know, all candidates are properly supported throughout their driving tests, and so it's what we can do to enable them to do that. Um, it's really important that we offer that consistent experience for everybody, um, regardless of any needs they may have. Um, there's no single uniform approach um, and that's where the deaf awareness pack has come from it's part of a toolkit and it's one of the many things we get to use as driving examiners um, and this is one to you know support those hard of hearing or with no hearing um, what we want to do is we want to encourage driving instructors to use the pack in their lessons so that the candidates are used to seeing it they've practiced with it they'll have a bit more of an understanding about what those prompt cards are and what they mean, so that then when they come up for tests, it's not a shock, it's not something new, um, and they're seeing it all the time. So it's out there, and it's available for you guys to use, and you can print it off. The prompt cards are there for you to print off and use on the Gov.uk website. We'll talk about that in a minute. So to develop the pack, um, we held workshops with our own driving examiners, so we talked to them about you know, um, things, the barriers that they've seen in place in the past and, and how it works for them. Uh, we spoke, went out and spoke to driving instructors um, and external stakeholders, which as you can see on there, do include the Disability Driving Instructors, Driving Mobility, NASP, and the Royal Association for Deaf People. So we tried to go out and encourage everybody that, that had a part in it to, to feed back to us and tell us what they thought. Um, once we put the pack together, um, when it was in you know, a phase of development, we took it out to driving examiners, they trialled it on tests, they fed back to us, we took it out and shared it with the instructors, we took the feedback from them, um, and also we went out to, to deaf candidates. So this is what we've done, what do you think, what can we do different, what needs changing? Um, so the, it, was, you know, it was quite a big project, it did take quite a long time, but to get the pack at the end, you've got to make sure you've covered all those bases. If you rush in and do it, you're just going to constantly be going back and changing it. Um, so once we got all that in, we made all the alterations, it's then a little bit more of a process because we have to go through lots of different hoops to make sure it's been checked and all the English is right and that sort of thing, and then we got there. So it was created and endorsed by um, the Disability Driving Instructors, Driving Mobility, NASP and the Royal Association for Deaf People. So it has hopefully been, you know, all the people we needed were at the table. So how to use it? So this is how driving examiners use it. 
um, they'll use it to help explain what's going to happen during the test. Um, They'll also agree any hand signals that we want to use. So it doesn't replace that. It doesn't stop us from still saying, OK, what do you use for a roundabout? What do you use for left? What do you use for right? We're still going to do that. And we're still going to have those discussions before the test. But the pack will enable us to have those discussions easier and to bring that information forward. And then within the pack is prompt cards. So for each manoeuvre, we'll see them in a minute, there's a prompt card. So as an examiner, you probably will have prepared that before you go out. So you'll know you're going to go out and do a a reverse park, probably take a spare one just in case you can't find a car, but you know, you'll have an idea of which card you're going to use out on test that day. Um, the, for the show and tell me questions, it's written, and it's the written instructions are exactly what's written in the DT1, so it's, it's what we're used to seeing as an examiner, so it's how we are asking them, it's the wordings we're used, it's just written on a prompt card so that they can read that for the show and tell me questions. This doesn't replace BSL interpreter, not one bit. So if somebody's got a BSL interpreter on test, they can still bring them. This isn't to replace that. This is to support it, OK? And it's just another reasonable adjustment that we can make. It's another tool within the kit. Um, and uh, it, it's, that's all it's there for. It's just to help us help them and to ensure we can do the best by them for their driving test on that day. So as driving instructors, if you use the pack before lessons, that'd be great. Like I say, have a read through it, see what you think, um, share it with your candidates. You could print it out or, or show them online and they could go away and read it between lessons and have a look and see what they think. Um, so all familiarity is good. So if you go onto gov.uk and type in driving test prompt cards, it's all on there. Okay, so it's all on there for anybody that wants it. gov.uk driving test prompt cards. Um, it is designed specifically for deaf candidates as a reasonable adjustment, okay? Um, it's not intended for any alternative purpose. Um, and that sounds a bit odd, that. Um, we've had a few requests about English not being the first language. It's not for that because it is a reasonable adjustment for disability, okay? So that's what it's, that's its sole intention and that's the purpose it's used for, okay? So, an example of a prompt card. So, this is one for independent driving for signs, and it is the words we use, but it's just written down, okay? So, they can read it. And like I say, if you've got somebody that actually doesn't read very well, then we'll have that conversation before the test. So, you know, let the line manager know, or the test centre manager know, that you're going to be coming up in a few days. Let them know you've got a deaf candidate. You know, have that conversation prior to the test so that the examiner's aware, you know, you've made that contact, you've had that conversation. Um, and then if you've got a candidate that may struggle with reading the prompt card, you can have that discussion before the test so it can be dealt with prior to that, okay? Um, so that's one of them. Um, so that's the sat-nav one, so there's less information, but there is when we use the words, because the sat-nav's going to do all the work for us. So, um, you know, that's all good. Um, so the emergency stop one, again, it is exactly as we say it. So, you know, soon I'll ask you to do the emergency stop uh, when I give you this, the um, sign. So we, we it is literally as we would talk it through. And we'll still demonstrate, you know, when we say stop, like stop as quickly and safely as possible, we'll still give those hand signals. You know, we're not going to stop any of that just because they're reading the card. So we're still going to do the demonstration, um, but they'll be able to read it from the card. Um, same reverse park on the road, it's just another one just to give you an idea of what they are. So again, it is what we'd say. Um, and they could read it in their own time and let us know um, when they're ready to go. I think maybe one more. And that's a good one, isn't it? That's one we all want to see. So <laughs> that's the end of the test. I'm pleased to say you've passed. The good thing is it's actually written on the iPad now, which is quite nice, because I always turn the iPad when I do a test anyway and say, I'm pleased to say you've passed. So, um, but yeah, it's good to, to see it on there as well, isn't it? So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the one we all want. Um, so that's just a quick overview of it. It, it's, it is what it is. It's out there for you to read and see. It, it's just to enable people, give them another tool, you know, help quell those nerves. Um, we don't want to put barriers in place, so anything we can overcome, and that's what this is. It's a reasonable adjustment to overcome any disability that might be there. And there we go. Any questions? Yeah, it's, it, it is a reasonable adjustment for disability, and, and that's what we've got to remember. That's what the pack's been put together for, 
Okay, so it is for deaf candidates, and that's its sole purpose, and that's what we're going to be using it for. So, well, yeah. You can, you can make adjustments during the runoffs on the test, on the assessment. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Right, you know, like saying somebody, when you're getting used to your clothes. Yeah. Sorry, I can't quite hear what you're saying. Some, uh, some of the candidates will be, uh, uh, some of them will be pretty, some of them will sign. So it will be to, to get to the assessment. They'll be getting used to the cards as well, so by the time the test runs, they'll have yeah. got used to the cards. Yes. So it's basically, you can explain it. In addition to rather than... Uh, yeah, building up to, to in addition to them, and it's the same... Yes, it, it's a consistent all the way. That, and that's what we're trying to encourage is consistency, and it's exactly that. Yeah, so if you've got a deaf candidate and from day one you're starting to use some prompt cards, or when you're introducing the parallel park, so I'll get the parallel prompt card out, you know, this is what you see, this is what it means, this is the parallel park, because you'll have that time right at the beginning when you're teaching to go through those things. Um, so that when they get to test, it'll be, oh, the parallel park card, I know what this means, I need to do, 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 do. And in fact, they'll probably glance over the instructions yeah. and think, well, I know what you mean anyway, because I've done this. So, yeah, that's exactly what it's for. And that's why, you know, it's out there and it's for you guys to use because for exactly that reason, because we don't want people to come up and it's the first time they've seen it because then it's a bit like, well, I've not seen this before. And, you know, but it doesn't stop us from asking them at the beginning of the test about any, um, you know, physical hand signals and that they've been using. So, you know, we're still going to do that if because we're going to need to do that on the move. We won't be showing prompt cards on the move. They are purely for stationary purposes only. Okay, so the, we'll still use the agreed hand signals whilst we're moving about pulling up and turn left and turn right. They are they, these prompt cards can only be used while stationary. We would never expect a candidate to read from them whilst we're whilst the car's moving. Yeah. Um, you said about um, having a word with your test centre manager a few days before. Yeah. Um, when the, the way I saw it, I thought we uh, some of the challenging. They could have, um, they would get a double slot anyway. Yeah, so you can book that, and yeah. the instructions do come through. But quite often, um, the journals, the examiner only sees the journal for the next day. We don't, because it's got candidate details and things, they don't have them days in advance. Mm -hmm. So it might only be the next, that they, if they happen to look through the next day. But you've got somebody like myself that tends to test on a Saturday, and in fact, it's normally a Friday night, Saturday morning, I pick up my iPad and think, what have we got going on today? Because um, I know I'm going to do seven tests, so if there's anything on there, I might you know, we might not pick it up as early. So the reason that it's good to go to the test centre managers just to give a little bit of forewarning. So then they can look it up on the journal, knowing it's coming in, just see the notes that have been made and, and that sort of thing. So I think the, the communication a few days before is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just to say, you know, and in fact, what you can write in a box when you book a test is quite different to what you can say to somebody when you chat to them. So there's no harm in getting in touch and having that conversation. But do we need to book a double? It, it will depend on the extent of the need. So it's a really difficult one for me to say because it really does depend because you do get some um, deaf candidates that come up that are partially deaf and actually you can do it in a normal slot because they've got a few hand signals, you've got a couple of prompt cards and you can just do it as a, you know, within the time allowed. Um, but then other people, the severity is more and, it, and, and, and you know, their processing that might be a lot slower and all those sort of things. So you can't really say. It would have to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. All right. What I would say with the, with the double slot booking is that the double slot is usually allocated by um, the, 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 the booking centre. Yeah. It's not requested by the ADI. Yeah. Okay, so you say what the, what the need is, yeah, and they decide whether it's going to be a double slot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it's a case-by-case -case basis. Any other questions? Oh, have I got up politely? I'll hand you back to John. Oh, thank you. Um, we're around over at the back of the hall today, so if there's anything else, do feel free to come over and have a chat, OK? There we go. Thank OK, you. thank you, Amanda. Um, right, so... Moving briefly on. So that's a, a good overview of the Deaf Customer Support Pack. Um, as I say, I'm in the process of completing um, the ADI Handbook on Teaching Deaf People to Drive, um, which covers all aspects of um, 
all aspects of, of teaching deaf people to drive with the tuition, but it also explains about the driving test as well. Um, and it, it, covers, it covers theory tests, it covers all aspects of learning to drive. So it covers um, special needs tuition um, for, or special needs coaching for the theory test um, and any, any additional help that is available. All right. Um, as Amanda said, you can go on to gov.uk and you can search for the prompt cards. Um, that is the link for the, the gov.uk site for the, for the prompt cards. Um, the disability driving instructors link, you can scan that. Um, it's on the desk outside as well. Um, there's some cards here which has got the same um, link. And that gives you a link to a database which contains loads of information sheets um, about the, the theory test, the practical test, about teaching people to drive. Um, and it gives a link through to the ADI handbook. All right, so um, DBSA are advising ADIs to read the customer support pack and to use it during training, as Amanda said. Um, the, the pack also encourages the ADIs to contact the test centre manager um, before, the contact, uh, before the candidates test. Now, that is important, as, as was said. Sometimes, not very often, but sometimes, the message doesn't get through from the booking centre through to the test centre. Yeah? And it's vitally important that the examiner is forewarned that there is a, um, a test coming up for a deaf candidate so that the examiner can prepare. Yeah, so that is, uh, it is very, very important. All right, now the pack is saying that, the, um, that we, should, um, we should be confirming with the test centre the hand gestures that are going to be used on test, the hand gestures that have been used during tuition. Okay, um, the pack is not actually describing the hand gestures. So we'll be giving an indication of hand gestures that can be used. We are not saying that you must use any particular hand gestures to direct your pupils on, on tuition, that you must use this and the examiners must use this. But what we are doing is suggesting hand gestures that can be used, right? And ultimately, ultimately, if all, if all instructors are using the same hand gestures, and the examiners are familiar with those hand gestures, it makes the transition from tuition through to testing much easier, right? And it means that all the, all the examiner needs to do is just confirm what hand gestures are being used rather than sort of saying, right, what do you use? And then having to sort of very quickly remember when they're on test what hand gestures they've just been shown, yeah? So it's far better if we can all use the same hand gestures, yeah? So that's, that's the ultimate aim that, 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 we, that we need. Finally, are there any other special needs requirements that need to be discussed with the examiner? If you're talking to the test centre in advance, right, then any other special needs may be required. Right? Now, it's a reasonable adjustment when, for example, it comes down to, um, when, when it comes down to the independent driving. It's a reasonable adjustment to say that you, my particular pupil doesn't cope well with the um, with reading the road signs, right? But they're fine with a sat nav, or vice versa. Okay, um, especially if you've got somebody who has been deaf from birth and is using BSL to communicate, they're not going to be, or they may not be, very good at reading the English language because they're used to reading BSL. Okay, and it may be that that person struggles reading written directions on road signs. Yeah? Okay, or if they're following the sat nav, if you can hear the sat nav instructions, then you're getting uh, an, an instruction from the sat nav that you can hear, plus you're getting a visual cue from the sat nav screen as well. If you're only getting the visual cue from the sat nav screen, you're, you're immediately at a disadvantage. So it's a, a reasonable accommodation to, to state that, that they struggle with one or other and the examiner should then be able to offer their more able um, method of following independent driving. Okay, but the examiner needs to know about that in advance. Yeah, and it's vitally important. Again, um, 
So, hand gestures that are needed. The, these hand gestures are actually detailed in the Deaf Candidate Support Pack. Uh, the hand gestures that are needed on test, moving off, pulling up on the left, taking the next road on the left right, taking the second or third road on the left right, turning left to right at the end of the road, uh, and turning at roundabouts. So those are the hand gestures that, that we need to be able to make sure that everybody understands. Plus, an important final hand gesture, and that is the hand gesture that is made by the candidate when he doesn't understand the gesture that he's been given, right, or he needs it repeating, right, or if it's confusing somebody, yeah? Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to cut off the screen now because we need to uh, plug in a camera. There we go. Right, my colleague Richard now is going to describe some of the hand gestures that we're that, that we would be wanting you to use, ideally, right? So, um, obviously, at the start, the first hand gesture you need is to move off when you're ready, when it's safe to do so. So, move off when you're ready, simple hand gesture, okay? And, importantly, if you're, if you're moving off, then you need to be able to stop at the side of the road. So, pull up on the left. Okay, now some of these hand gestures might be slightly different from hand gestures that, that any of you ADIs who are teaching deaf people to drive might be using on a day-to-day -day basis. But as I say, it is a, a suggested hand gesture that can be used. Okay, um, there's no right or wrong, there's lots of different hand gestures from different parts of the country and different people to use. Okay, um, taking the next road on the left or on the right. What is important when you're giving hand gestures is that you make it clear to your, uh, to your pupil and the pupil understands the hand gestures that you're giving. Okay, so you do need to use your hand in front of the middle of the car so that the pupil can see it but without getting in the way of the pupil so he can still see the road. Yeah, so it's, uh, you, know, you, you, you don't want to do, be doing the hand gestures down here somewhere. You don't want to be doing them over here. You don't want to be saying turn left with your left hand and turn right with your right hand. Yeah, okay. Have we lost something? Not a battery. Dead battery. Dead battery. So, yeah, stand up on the, yeah, okay. Um, if you're taking the second or third road on the left, yeah, then, yeah, second road on the left, second road on the right. Yeah, and it, it's important that, that's probably more important with somebody with a hearing difficulty than it is somebody who's he, who, who is hearing normally, um, because you need to make sure that the, um, you need to make sure that the, the, the hand gesture is given and understood in plenty of time. Okay, so if you've got two roads in close succession where you would normally have enough time in between the two to give a verbal instruction, it's more important when you're giving a hand signal yeah, that that is given and understood in plenty of time. Yeah? Okay, so it might be that you're needing to change the order of your instruction slightly um, to take into account that the, the method of communication is going to take slightly longer. Um, turning left or right at the end of the road... Okay, um, and and finally, at a roundabout, at a roundabout, so you're rotating your finger, um, taking the first, second, third, or fourth exit. So, just illustrating with your fingers. Okay, and you 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 can be doing that, yeah, to to demonstrate which way you're going. Yeah, okay, and that should, should get the message across. Okay, now those are the basic directions that you need when you're taking your test. Okay, there's lots more hand gestures that you would need whilst you're teaching somebody to drive, but the, the hand gestures that you're making when you're teaching somebody to drive would be considered um, prompting um, if you were using those during a test. Okay, so it is literally just telling somebody to turn left or right at the end of the road, into the next road on the right, at a roundabout, whatever. Okay, um, now it's important that, the, um, that your pupil can make a hand gesture of some sort to tell the instructor or the examiner that they don't understand an instruction. Yeah, 
that's important. Okay, so, yeah. So anyone who knows BSL will probably recognise this again. Yeah. Okay, so that, that is a method of, of that pupil explaining that they are, um, that they don't understand, yeah? Okay, now when it comes down to, when it comes down to the prompt cards, as Amanda was saying, the prompt cards are intended to be used once you have stopped at the side of the road, okay? And anything that is more complicated with, an, with a hand gesture or an instruction you need to get the pupil to stop at the side of the road because you can't expect the pupil to be reading a prompt card whilst they're driving along. It's not going to be fair. Yeah? And it's not going to be safe. Okay, so pull up at the side of the road, then you can use the prompt cards or the interpreter if, if there's an ADI interpreting, if there's an independent interpreter, you, they can come in and they can then um, explain in more details what the instructor or the examiner is saying. It also follows on that if there are more... If there are directions needed for more complex junctions, right, then it may be necessary to stop before the first junction. So say if you're taking your test in Derby and you're heading back to the test centre, yeah, then you'll be coming up to Blue Peter Island where you need to be turning left at the first roundabout and then going straight on at the second roundabout, which means that you need to be in the middle lane to turn left at the first roundabout and then you need to be following through in the right-hand lane and then into the middle lane for the second roundabout. Yeah, but it's a fairly complex instruction and it will be very difficult to do that on the move in between uh, with, with the pupil actually understanding what was being said. So stop at the beginning, draw a diagram if necessary, right? Um, use the interpreter if necessary to make sure the pupil is not disadvantaged by confusing directions in between the two roundabouts, yeah? Okay, now that is um, the... The instruction to the examiner is that they should do that. That's the instruction in the Deaf Candidate Support Pack. Yeah? Okay? All right, another... And I'm winding up now, but one of the other things that is very important is that the pupil or the candidate understands that they will not be required to do an emergency stop in the middle of a drive or in the middle of a test without it being explained fully whilst they're stationary at the side of the road. Okay, we don't want a situation that occurred fairly recently um, where a test candidate was driving along a 70 mile an hour dual carriageway and the examiner asked them, with the aid of what they thought was simple sign language, they asked them to show me how you can wash the front windscreen. Okay, now the, the candidate thought that they wanted them to do an emergency stop, so they just slammed the brakes on, on a 70 mile an hour dual carriageway. Yeah? Fortunately, there wasn't anything following. Okay, but the examiner, when he got back to the test centre, it, it was actually a pass because he hadn't done anything wrong, right? But when the examiner got back to the test centre, he was still a little bit green-tinged in the face. <laughs> yeah? Okay, but that is, that is important. And that is, again, explained fully in the Deaf Candidate Support Pack, that, that, that it needs to be explained in advance, right? Final thing I'm going to say with regard to contacting your test centre during the week before the test, possibly earlier than that even, right? The examiners are perfectly happy to arrange a meeting with the ADI and the test candidate at the test centre in advance, so a few days before the test. They're perfectly happy to set up that sort of meeting if they have sufficient knowledge then they can discuss everything at leisure, under no pressure, yeah? They can make sure that the, examiner, that the examiner knows what hand gestures the ADI has been using during tuition, right? The examiner can discuss it with the candidate to make sure that the candidate understands the instructions, the, the hand gestures that the examiner is going to be using on test. Everybody can do that in a nice relaxed atmosphere yeah, a few days or even on the morning of the test if the test is in the afternoon, yeah, right? It explains that, in, again, in the Deaf Candidate Support Pack that that option is open, yeah, right? And if we get the liaison between the ADI and the test centre manager, that can be set up, right? 
So the examiners want to be able to make sure that they can be understood. They want to make sure the test is going to run smoothly. All right? And if we can have that sort of liaison, then we're going to have that smooth transition that we're looking for between tuition and taking your test. All right? And if the, examiner, sorry, if the candidate has been prepared during that tuition, then that lovely little prompt card at the end, congratulations, you've passed, will be proffered right, and will be appreciated. Okay, so there's lots of information there. Um, we are running out of time, so I'm going to have to wind up. Um, but any, any very brief questions here? If you've got any more questions that are more complicated, you can always come and see us at the stand outside. But any questions from the floor at the moment? All quiet. That's what I like to hear. Doesn't put me on a spot. Okay, right? It is really good to see ADIs who are willing to go the extra mile to help people who are disadvantaged. Yeah, so let's have more of them. There is a question at the back I can see there. Right, well, um, it, probably, it probably wouldn't be used as a hand gesture. You'd be using the prompt cards, right? You'd be, you, so, so, well, the prompt cards are available if you, if, you, if, you go, if you go onto that QR code. You can download, you can download the, the entire pack as a printable version, right? You can download the prompt cards as a printable version. Um, unfortunately, the DBSA link at the moment doesn't give a version that easily prints because it, it is how it's been downloaded. It sort of merges one page onto the next page, so it doesn't print very well. But there's a PDF on that on that that uh, you can either go via that QR code or you can go via the the DBSA QR code and it takes you onto the same site. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you do want to know how you maybe teach it to a learner, you say clean. There you go. Okay. All right, but the, the, there's there's the, yeah, <laughs> but there's lots of there's lots of gestures that are used whilst you are teaching that are much more detailed than we would do here. Yeah. Okay. All right. But what what I was stressing when I was talking just a moment ago, it is very good to see that the ADIs are going out there and they're willing to take extra time and help people um, who are deaf and hard of hearing. Yeah because they, they deserve to be able to learn to drive the same as everybody else does, yeah? Right, that's what we're about, disability driving instructors, trying to level the playing field to make the opportunities for disabled and hard of hearing people um, as wide and open as they are for able-bodied people and hearing people. Thank you very much for your time. Come and see us on the stand outside. Thank you, Amanda, for your contributions as well. Okay. Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk. Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. 
If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk.